What's going on, buddy? Oh, hey, oh, officer. Don't move. Oh, I was just... Step back. Keep your hands where I can see them. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking moments in sitcoms. And ain't nobody gonna stop me. Come tomorrow, I'm out of here. Oh yeah, I don't think so. Who cares what you think? You are not my father! For this list, we'll be looking at the most jaw-dropping and heartbreaking moments in television comedy. Since all of these moments are truly surprising, consider this your official spoiler warning. Which of these moments shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Rebecca's Rock Bottom, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Despite its cheery exterior, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend goes to some dark places. It was often praised for depicting protagonist Rebecca Bunch's struggles in an honest way. But you can get off the plane in LA and buy a new ticket. True, true. Yeah. The thing is, I'm just too tired to buy things or do things or get things or say things or face things. In season three, she finds herself at an all-time low. After escaping her life in West Covina, she seeks comfort from her mother, Naomi, in New York. Their relationship gets extremely strained when it's revealed that the mother's been sneaking medication into her daughter's system. Of course you didn't change. The only reason I was feeling better is because you gave me these drugs that blitzed me out and made my ears buzz. In the wake of this betrayal, Rebecca attempts to overdose by swallowing a handful of the leftover meds. She quickly realizes the severity of her situation and gets a flight attendant's attention before it's too late. The episode marked a major turning point in the series and promoted the importance of asking for help. I'm aware mental illness is stigmatized, but the stigma is worth it if I realize who I'm meant to be armed with my diagnosis. Number nine, Ben's death, Scrubs. Ben, you have leukemia. Well, that sucks. Cox's brother-in-law, Ben, was treated for leukemia in the first season. When he returns in season three, he defends JD when a patient passes away on his watch. 20 minutes after you left, he went into cardiac arrest. We tried to resuscitate him, but there was nothing we could do. I'm sorry. This stance angers Cox throughout the episode, but Ben is able to push the cranky doctor towards a place of forgiveness. But by the time he's ready to move on, Cox realizes that the patient that passed away was Ben. You have to forgive yourself for everything that went down the other day. <laughs> You're so annoying. Yeah. It turns out that the doctor had been hallucinating that his brother-in-law was around after his death. The episode ends at the funeral. The emotional and jarring plot twist still hurts the hearts of fans decades later. Number eight, Gloria's miscarriage, all in the family. It's me! Gloria's gonna have a baby! You're gonna be a grandpa! <laughs> During an era when sitcoms often played it safe, all in the family was fearless. From racism to religion, the series never shied away from exploring topics other shows didn't dare tackle. And they didn't wait long to dive into serious territory. In season one, the Bunkers learn that their daughter Gloria and her husband Mike are expecting a child. At first, the episode focuses on Archie's anger about the pregnancy, but things soon take a somber turn when Gloria suffers a devastating miscarriage. Gloria, what's the matter? Hey, you okay? Something's wrong. Uh, well, uh, sit down. No! Mike, call the doctor! The heavy episode depicts a genuine and honest portrayal of an issue that is often swept under the rug, even today. Archie, Gloria lost the baby. What are you talking about? What do you mean by that? But the doctor says she's gonna be fine. Number seven, Terry's racial profiling, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. As the Black Lives Matter movement became the subject of more and more headlines, Brooklyn Nine-Nine had some tough conversations to confront. Look, nine out of ten times they get called to that neighborhood, it's about a guy that looks like you. Were you responding to a call? No, you're missing the point. No, you're missing the point. I just want you to admit you only stop me because I'm black. The comedy, which follows the misadventures of a New York City precinct, could not ignore the topic of policing and racism. They tackled the issue head on by including a plot point where the black officer Terry is racially profiled by a fellow cop. Listen. Whoa, you need to lower your voice. Lower my voice? No, put your hands on your head, turn around, don't make any sudden movements. I didn't do anything. Also, I'm a... Keep talking. See what happens next, huh? 
He spends the episode trying to decide whether or not to file a complaint, while also trying to manage the emotional toll of the incident. It's a heavy but vital storyline. I wasn't a guy who lived in a neighborhood looking for his daughter's toy. I was a black man. A dangerous black man. That's all he could see. A threat. In a time where awareness is spreading about policing, storylines like this are needed to cast light on the topic. Number 6. Mateo's Deportation Superstore Superstore always places emphasis on the importance of fundamental issues. In one of the show's most paramount episodes, the big box retail store witnesses one of their own facing deportation. I'm gonna miss working with you. Sorry, relax. I'm gonna get out. Yeah, but even if you do make it out, you can't come back. Now that they know... No. Knowing that he does not have citizenship, sales associate Mateo lives in constant fear. His worst nightmare comes true when Cloud Nine is raided by ICE. I think we're doing it, right? You're doing it? There you are. They know about you. What? what? They saw your picture. They know what you look like. We have to go now. Okay, well, where do we go? I don't know. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. His colleagues do everything in their power to hide and protect him, but in the end, he's found and taken away. The whole episode is heartbreaking because of how authentic it appears, as this is the reality for countless people across America. The guards think all undocumented people are Latinos, so they just keep yelling at me in Spanish, and I don't understand what they're saying. I just, just want to go home. Number 5. Arnold and Mr. Horton – Different Strokes In a chilling two-part episode, Different Strokes featured one of the most disturbing storylines in sitcom history. The content was so heavy that it even included a content advisory read by show lead Conrad Bain. Titled The Bicycle Man, the arc followed the budding friendship between Arnold and Dudley and bicycle shop owner Mr. Horton. Maybe it would be best if you didn't even mention, you know, that you came back here and that I gave you all this ice cream before dinner. Why don't we just make it our little secret, huh? But it's soon too clear that the latter has sinister intentions for the young people he befriends. Fortunately, adults step in to aid their children through this difficult scenario. Uh, look, I'm sorry, Mr. Drummond. I'm just about to close up here. I I've had a little problem. Is this that. Horton? Yes, it is. I think you've got a big problem, Mr. Horton. Now, where is Dudley? Arnold told us that he was here. Strokes received acclaim for handling the sensitive subject matter well and was even credited with helping children identify inappropriate adult behavior. But you do have to be careful. If somebody wants you to do something that's wrong or if they want you to lie to your parents, that is a person should not be trusted, no matter how good the reason they give you seems to be. Number four, Marshall's dad's death, How I Met Your Mother. Season 6 of How I Met Your Mother included the death of Marshall's father. After he and Lily spend the day at the fertility specialists, they both anticipate the worst. And so Marshall told his parents everything. And so now I'm just scared that we won't be able to give you a grandchild. Oh, Marshall. Hey, we don't care about that one bit. But they could never have guessed that their bad news would come from another source. The moment Marshall receives some positive information about fertility, Lily arrives to tell him that his dad has suffered a fatal heart attack. Something's happened. Um, your father, he had a heart attack. He didn't make it. Jason Siegel and Alison Hannigan improvised the moment and shot the heartbreaking scene in just one take. Not only did this shock fans, but also Siegel as well. In the end, this approach led to one of the saddest moments in the entire show. I'm not ready for this. Number 3. Will's Dad Leaves the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Despite spending over a decade apart, Will's father Lou unexpectedly returned in a season 4 episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Uncle Phil immediately has his reservations about whether or not Lou will stick around. Will is not a coat that you hang in the closet then pick it up when you're ready to wear it. His life goes on. He's not supposed to be here for you. You're supposed to be here for him. You get off my back! However, Will and Lou make plans to venture out on a road trip and mend their relationship. But the disappearing dad decides to abandon the plan and his son at the last moment. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Um, some business came up I gotta handle. So we're gonna have to put our, our trip on hold. You understand? 
A distraught and rightfully hurt Will launches into an incredibly emotional monologue before breaking down in front of his uncle. It's a powerful moment made even stronger by both Will Smith's and the late James Avery's incredible acting. How come you don't want me, man? Number two, Maud's pregnancy. Maud. Split into a two-parter, the Norman Lear comedy Maud addressed a critical topic in its very first season. When the title character discovers she is pregnant at 47 years old, she has to decide what to do. Uh -huh. Arthur's a doctor. Honey, he told it's me that. It's all right. It's all right. Just tell me, Walter, that I'm doing the right thing, not having the baby. She ultimately decides that getting an abortion is the right thing to do. Since such a topic was rarely discussed in mainstream media at the time, the subject matter received backlash. I think it would be wrong to have a child at our age. Oh, so do I, Walter. Oh, Walter, so do I. Some stations even decided to forgo airing the episode altogether. Lear stood by the storyline and offered an honest depiction of a topic that is far too often kept in the dark. For you, Maud, for me. In the privacy of our own lives, you're doing the right thing. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Martha's decision, Golden Girls. Sophia's friend Martha shockingly wants to end her life due to physical pain. No, I want to go. Lydia looked so peaceful. We're not in this life for peace. You're crying. No, I'm not. I don't cry. Topanga's professor hits on her. Boy Meets World. Viewers weren't expecting him to make these uncomfortable advances. I'm telling you that I'd like to get to know you better. And that's what I'm gonna do. Stuart, you're making me uncomfortable. I want you to leave. That's not what you want. Raven experiences racism. That's so Raven. She loses out on a job opportunity due to a racist employer. And I saw Chloe straight up say I do not hire black people. What? discrimination. I don't believe this. Dre and Bo separate, blackish. The two spouses reach a breaking point in their marriage. How the hell did we get here? I don't know. The death of Howard's mum, The Big Bang Theory, a surprising moment for the usually light-hearted sitcom. That was my aunt. Ma took a nap. She never woke up. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, plane crash, mash. For over a decade, MASH perfectly towed the line between comedy and drama. Situated during the Korean War at a military hospital, the show did not shy away from levity. So long, Hawk. I'm afraid just a handshake won't do it, Henry. One of the legendary series' most challenging moments hit audiences with an unforgettable gut punch. After Colonel Blake receives his discharge, we watch a bittersweet send-off. Save yourself, or I'm gonna come back and kick your butt. Things take a heartaching turn when Radar delivers horrifying news. Apparently, Blake's plane crashed and he did not survive. Lieutenant Colonel, Henry Blake's plane was shot down over the Sea of Japan. The moment stands the test of time as one of the most brutal revelations in the history of American television. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.